Polka historian and promoter DJ Shotsky recently reminded me that on April 21st, 1994, the state of Wisconsin named the Polka its official state dance. As we commemorate the 30th anniversary of this occasion this week, I'd like to recognize the history and evolution of the numerous polka styles that developed in the state of Wisconsin. The first person recognized as the Polka King was a gentleman from Manitowoc, Wisconsin named Romy Gaz. Starting in the late 1920s, he was playing in his dad's band, the Paul Gaz Orchestra, which later became the Romy Gaz Orchestra, and he had numerous recordings and toured throughout the Upper Midwest in a fashion that earned him the title, the Polka King. After the war, names like Dick Rogers and Dick Metko became very popular, keeping up that bohemian sound that's sometimes referred as Dutchman-style polkas today. A lot of that repertoire that they play are songs that were composed in what is now considered the Czech Republic and Slovakia, as well as Germany. Many of the songs in this repertoire were published by the VTAC Elsnick Music Publishing Company out of the Chicago area. Ironically, Romy Gaz, who was a trumpet player, didn't even have an accordion player in his band. It was not until the post-war era where the accordion became a very popular instrument in the United States. Dick Rogers on the piano accordion and Dick Metko on the Chemnitzer concertina started an era where the virtuosic styles on accordion-like instruments became important and integral to the polka sound. Today, Wisconsin has some of the best concertina players in the world playing their Dutchman-style polkas. Artists like Carl Hartwick, Gary and Brian Brigham, and John Dietz are synonymous with the virtuoso playing of the concertina in all polka styles. Down in the Milwaukee area, the Slovenian style was the most popular form of polka music. With the national touring and recording of America's polka king, Frank Yankovic from Cleveland, came his contemporary Louis Bichel, and later Vern Meisner, and of course his son Steve Meisner, and Roger Bright, who also got his touring start in Frankie Yankovic's band. Down in the Milwaukee area, in southern Wisconsin, the Slovenian style reigned supreme. Louis Bichel got national recognition for his interpretation of the Slovenian folk song Jaspati Pajida na Marela, or the Silk Umbrella Polka. In the post-World War II era, the Slovenian style was very popular in Milwaukee, partially because of the manufacturing of accordions that was being done in the city. Names such as Loduca, Santini, Baldoni, and Karpek were supplying accordions for artists such as Vern Meisner and later his son Steve, as well as Roger Bright, who toured with America's polka king, Frankie Yankovic. Roger brought the Swiss influence of the Nublaris community into his Slovenian-style polkas. Today, there are still many artists in the Milwaukee area playing the Slovenian style of polkas. Names like Jeff Winard, David Austin, and Mike Schneider are touring and performing within the region to many dancing audiences. The Polish style became very popular in Milwaukee through the 50s, 60s, and 70s with the touring of artists from Chicago such as Little Wally, Marian Lush, and Eddie Plazuncek and the Versatones. Through the 80s and 90s, a lot of bands existed playing Polish-style polkas from around the United States in Wisconsin. One of the largest festivals in the United States is Pulaski's Polka Days. Pulaski has had many, many Polish polka bands, including Chad and his concertina, the Moroshik Brothers, and of course, one of my favorite from the 90s, Polka Town Sound. Today, polkas are alive and well in Wisconsin thanks to numerous bands, promoters, and dancers who continue to come out and support Dutchman-style polkas, Polish and Slovenian styles, as well as more traditional brass bands such as Dorfkapel and the Alte Kameraden, and the more progressive sounds of Copperbox that take the roots of all those polka genres, mash them together with Conjunto, Tejano, and Zydeco, and jazz, and rock, and pop for their own Americana polka sound.
I hope this little introduction to Wisconsin polka music has encouraged you to start finding out more about this wonderful legacy of music that has been found in this great state. 30 years of celebrating the state dance as the polka is just the beginning. You can find plenty of old and new recordings and hopefully a lot more that's going to be created in the Wisconsin polka scene out there on Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, Amazon, and of course YouTube.